Hello there, welcome to our video on Ernest Rutherford, one of the scientists that we will be studying in this unit called The Atom. Please take out your handout so you can start taking notes. Let's start with some information about the life of Ernest Rutherford. He was born in 1871 in New Zealand and he's actually an English physicist and chemist so he spent most of his of his lifetime in England and he died in 1937 in Cambridge. He is known as being the father of nuclear physics and part of his early work involved the discovery of the concept of radioactivity. So Ernest Rutherford proved that radioactivity involved a transmutation of one element into another. He also discovered and was able to uh, differentiate and name alpha and beta particles, which are not part of uh, this presentation right now, this video, but we will study alpha and beta particles later on in this unit. So uh, I know you're very excited about that and we'll have more information on alpha and beta particles in um, next week in another video. Uh, just for us to, to talk about these particles, they are part of ionizing radiation. So when you hear alpha and beta particles, think about radiation. In 1907, he moved to the University of Manchester, and in 1908, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for his investigations into the disintegration of the elements and the chemistry of radioactive substances. Now, this is very interesting because he actually won the Nobel Prize before he performed his most famous work. In 1911, he... Um, came up with a theory that atoms have their charge concentrated in a very small nucleus. Uh, however, at this time, he could not prove if this nucleus was positive or negative, but he already knew that there was something small and very, very concentrated inside the atom. A couple of years later, in 1917, he... Uh, was the first one to actually split the atom in a nuclear reaction between nitrogen and alpha particles. And in this experiment, he also discovered the proton and he named it. Then in 1919, he became director of the lab at the University of Cambridge. And remember, J.J. Thompson was also there. Actually, Rutherford was one of his students. And under his leadership, um, as being the director of the lab at the University of Cambridge, James Chadwick, which is another scientist that we will study in this unit, discovered the neutron in, in 1932. And another uh, thing that J.J. Thompson and Rutherford have in common is that when Rutherford died, he was buried in Westminster Abbey, close to Sir Isaac Newton, just as J.J. Thompson did. So this is uh, some information on the life of Rutherford and the work he did. Now we're going to study how he discovered the nucleus of the atom. Here we have the famous experiment Rutherford performed to discover the nucleus of the atom. This is called the gold foil experiment or the geiger marsden experiment. It receives this name because Rutherford didn't work alone. He worked along with Hans Geiger and Ernest Marsden. And this experiment demonstrated the nuclear nature of atoms by deflecting alpha particles passing through a thin gold foil. So here we can see we have uh, the gold foil, we have an alpha particle emitter, and the alpha particles are aimed at this sheet of gold foil, very, very thin. Now, most of the particles just pass straight through the gold foil, but some of them bounce back. And this was just a small fraction that was bouncing back. So the conclusion was that the atom is mostly empty space and most of the positive charge is concentrated in this small area right here, which will be the nucleus. With the previous model of the atom, the one proposed by J.J. Thompson, we would expect all the particles to pass through, but we would not expect that there would be a small, uh, very dense mass right here that will actually deflect the particles. So these observations um, led to rather, rather for creating a new model of the atom in 1911, where there was a small charged nucleus inside the atom and the mass of the atom was mostly uh, concentrated in this nucleus and the rest was empty space. 
And this is very interesting because here we can see how a new model is created. On the top we have the plum pudding model and these were the expected results. So we would have the alpha particles just passing through the atom. Now the observations on the other side show that some particles were deflected right here. So there was something in the center of the atom that was not allowing the particles to flow through the through it, indicating that there was a small concentrated charge right there in the center. Based on these observations, Rutherford came up with a new atomic theory. The first point he proposed was that the atom has a central positive nucleus and this is surrounded by the negative electrons. The second point is that most of the mass of the atom is contained within this small nucleus and the rest of the atom is empty space. He also discovered protons later on uh, during his work and the third point here would be that the nucleus is composed of protons and neutrons. Remember that Rutherford also discovered protons and James Chadwick discovered neutrons under Rutherford's guidance. Now that we have the postulates of his atomic theory, we can actually make a model. This is Rutherford's atomic model. You see here that the protons and neutrons are concentrated in the nucleus, even though the neutrons are not shown here. Uh, we have a concentrated positive, and this will be a very dense mass. The electrons are outside the nucleus, and most of the atom will be empty space. Finally, we have a small video clip from Dr. Brian Cox, who will explain Rutherford's work. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in class. The mystery of how the electrons fitted inside the atom was eventually solved here in Manchester, in this building in 1911, by Ernest Rutherford. Rutherford was, in my opinion, one of the first proper particle physicists because he used beams of particles as projectiles to explore the structure of matter. Now, of course, in Rutherford's day, there was no such thing as a particle accelerator. So he used the decay of radioactive elements to produce these beams of particles. This is Rutherford's original desk. And in fact, if you hunt around a little bit, you can detect traces of radioactivity 100 years later. Rutherford asked two of his students, Hans Geiger and Ernest Marsden, to fire some alpha particles at a piece of thin gold foil and see what happened. So imagine these tennis balls are the alpha particles. Now if the atom were as Thompson had suggested, kind of amorphous blob, then you'd expect the alpha particles to pass right through. And that's indeed what happened to most of them. But to their surprise, they found that around one in 8,000 bounced right back. After two years of puzzling over the meaning of these results, Rutherford realized that in order for the alpha particles to bounce back, they must hit something small and dense. So his new model of the atom was a bit like the solar system, with all the mass concentrated at the centre and the electrons orbiting like planets around the sun. Today we know that this picture isn't quite correct. Quantum mechanics tells us that we can't know precisely where the electrons are, but we can predict that they reside in distinct shells around the nucleus. Rutherford's alpha particle scattering experiment was remarkably direct and simple, and it showed the nature of what the atomic structure is. By the way, the alpha particles bounced off the atom. He worked out where the positive charge of the atom was. Rutherford had come to the astonishing conclusion that most of the atom, and therefore most of what we think of as ordinary matter, is in fact empty space. So if this apple were the atomic nucleus, the electrons would be a kilometre away. After discovering the nucleus, Rutherford continued doing experiments, firing particles at different targets to delve into the structure of the nucleus itself. By 1932, Rutherford and his colleague James Chadwick had found that the nucleus is made of two kinds of particles, positively charged protons and electrically neutral neutrons. The 
discovery in these experiments 